It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. I feel like Ralph all of a sudden. Uh, whoa, this is really weird, man. I don't know if I, I, I was told to go and he'd follow. He's in costume and I haven't seen it. And he wanted to surprise me. So I didn't, I didn't see. Fucking dick. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is Saturday night in Hollywood, so let's uh, babble the fuck on. <laughs> uh, let's see how we handle this. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Kevin Smith. <laughs> um, oh, man. Had I known, I would have worn a leather jacket or just something. I okay. counted on you wearing this. Are, are you were... I was this close, dude. I almost wore the hoodie from the Southwest incident, and I was going to play Kev Smith from two years ago. Right. But I, I wore this, thank God. Otherwise, yeah. that would have been... A bit of a buzzkill. This is actually a pretty good look for us, yeah, man. Yeah, It's very comfy. I can see why you do it. I just... Oh, my God. For those listening at home, Ralph is dressed like a really great director. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Scorsese outfit. <laughs> This is what I would look like thin, though. You're haunting me right on stage. Like, every time I look over, I'm like, oh, that's what it could be. <laughs> I do feel like James Brolin when he played Pee Wee Herman in the movie about his life. Paging Mr. Herman, Mr. Pee Wee Herman. Wow. Happy Halloween, happy sir. Happy Halloween, sir. And happy Halloween to all of you, everybody. Yes. Thanks for coming out. It's a special edition of uh, of Halloween Boobalon. Wear your glasses. Boobalon. I haven't worn glasses in a while. You oh. can take them off. Go ahead, just lose them. It's like a Clark Kent Superman sure? thing. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to wear them. <laughs> you like, all right. Yeah. Now that way people can tell us apart. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for coming out to the special Halloween Babylon. Uh, we are having a, a little contest. Where'd you get the jersey? I had your uh, your assistant smuggle it out of your house for me. <laughs> Fucking Megan. <laughs> yeah. I told her I'd hire her if you fired her over this. So. Fair enough. She's good. Yeah. No, everybody was in on it, and I appreciate the help of all your uh, your nearest and dearest. Right down to the Etnies. I'm, I'm you, son. Right, and you've got jean shorts on. It's yeah? adorable. You are a thinner, healthier version of me. It's depressing. The hardest part was smoking a bale of weed today. That was <laughs> that was exhausting. I don't know how you do it every day, but it's, uh, uh, somebody's got to do it. Right? I know. Uh, it is the Halloween special edition of Babylon, and we are going to give out some prizes either uh, earlier or later on in the show to the uh, best guy and best girl costume. So thanks for you folks who came dressed up tonight. We appreciate it. There are a few. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, also, some business. You might wind up winning. <laughs> That's what I wanted to win so badly. Uh, the prize is the uh, special Kevin Smith Too Fat for 40 and Smotimations uh, box set. Thanks to the people at Shout Factory for this. And what's it got inside? Well, the reason uh, we're giving this away tonight is that it's the only place you can get the Hollywood Babylon DVD. It's actually a DVD of the show. So if you don't win tonight, you can, uh, you can buy this box set and get the Hollywood Babylon DVD. Uh, next week, we're going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada, for those people who are going to be in the region. We And we won't be here, sadly. We won't be here, so uh, come see us in Vegas if you're going to be nearby. Way to cheer up the crowd. Next week, we're not going to be here. Well, maybe they'll all come to Vegas. It's not yeah. that far. Yeah, that's true. Nobody wants to take that ride, though. Southwest is just a skip and a jump. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> drive. Drive. It's better. It's, it's, it's a short drive, and it's great. Everyone <laughs> likes that. Hurtful. 
As you know, we start the show every week with shout-outs for people who came particularly long distances. Or <laughs> You know what you look like is the G.I. Joe doll. <laughs> you know, not the little action figure, but from when we were kids, the 12-inch. With, with the Kung the fucking, Fu Grip? Kung Fu Grip, and he had the beard just like yours, yeah. man, where it was kind of real, yeah. but not. <laughs> it was a bitch to grow this in a day, I'll tell you. <laughs> Concentrated hair growing. Uh, we do shout-outs for people who came particularly long distance or are celebrating special occasions tonight, so we want to give some shout-outs. Is uh, Jim Mori here? Jim? Hey, Ralph, here. hey, Jim, how are you, sir? <laughs> that was the first time. I hey, Ralph, over here. Uh, I want to give Jim a shout-out because uh, he said he was going to be here tonight, and he also was the one who carved these uh, pumpkins of us tonight. So a, he did excellent work. Oh, shit. Thank you. That's adorable. Yeah, and that's me from, uh, from our logo. And uh, Jim's work's also going to be on uh, NFL this, uh, this Sunday. You can check it out. You can uh, see him doing the entire morning show uh, for the NFL cast. You can check that out. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m., yes. Uh, also, speaking of Sunday on Fox, uh, Family Guy this Sunday night. Doesn't mean anything to those of you listening because it's Monday. But uh, for you people here, I'll be the special guest star in Family Guy on Sunday night. So you can check that out. What are you doing on that show? What do you mean special guest? You've done voices before. I've done a ton of voices. Feature I'm, voice? I time? am the main character in the episode. I'm really? the guy. Yeah. yeah. They finally That's gave nice. me a big meaty role. So You're taking over Fox one show at a time, one, aren't exactly, you? Exactly. I am. After House, on The Family Guy, and then, uh, gosh, Bones, I guess. <laughs> Jumping Bones, will I'll you? Be, I'll be a corpse. Right on. Uh, so, uh, Jim, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Uh, Chris and Lizzie yeah. from Tasmania. You devils. No. Chris writes, recently uh, convinced Lizzie to move back to Australia after spending six years in New York City. Little did she know we'd be going to one of the most isolated spots in the bloody world. Yeah, Tasmania is kind of isolated, isn't it? I was wondering if you could get a shout out as Adam West and could explain to the audience what Australians mean when they say, show us your map of Tassie. Sure, I'd be happy to. Do we have a, do we have a, a map of, of of Tasmania we can throw up on the screen there so we can get an idea of what it means when guys say, show me the map of Tassie. <laughs> you see, old chum, women who are natural down below always carry with them a map of Tasmania. It's their pubic hair. <laughs> How much time do you put into this, man? Quite a How bit. much forethought were you thinking? Quite a bit of... <laughs> You didn't uh, want to send me an email going like, you might want to dress like me this week. <laughs> I, could, I knew I could count on you. Right, sure. um, this is from uh, Brandon K. Brandon K., you here with uh, Liz and, and Sin? Uh, arm raised doesn't help us. Got to make a little noise, Brandon K. There we, that's what we're talking about. I'm bringing Are you Electra? He is. Look at that. He's got the weapons and everything. Oh, it's we, a, are you a some... dude? <laughs> Yes, yes, Brandon is a dude. That's a guy? That's that's a guy, yes. <laughs> Thing I asked. I'm excited. I saw bare skin, Electra, size. I was like, right on, man. All of a sudden, wood hit the table. Yeah. <laughs> Sexy. Oh, speaking of wood, we forgot the shout-out theme, didn't we? Oh, sorry about that. Can we hit that, James? Better late than never. It's a shout-out. Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. I'm now you gotta like do you, it. But I'm not doing it. You that. gotta no, do it, man. Happening. That's what Kevin it. Smith would do. Nah, well, not this Kevin Smith. <laughs> man. Uh, Brandon says he brought Liz and Sin with him, two Babel virgins, to the show. These two ladies are very special to me, Brad, Brad writes. Um, Brandon, rather. I've known them since high school. They've been there for me through some incredibly tough times. They've not only lent, them, lent me their hand and shelter when needed, but also gave me endless emotional support over the years. In fact, Cindy even went as far as to be my beard for my parents. That's sweet. Get out of here. So she was just like the girlfriend and whatnot, and you were like, I'm going to go in the room and feel her boobies at second base. And the parents are like, whew. Wasn't uh, you dressing like Electra a hint to the folks maybe that... <laughs> All right. Uh, like their, I said, they're they saw their friends. boy dressed as Electra, and they were like, "Sigh." Oh, that's a really funny fucking comic book joke. If you're <laughs> from that world at all, at home they're laughing. 
I wanted to tell them a simple thank you from Harrison Ford, since that is my favorite voice of yours. As far as Mr. Smith goes, please let him know that he can come watch me and my partner anytime. Not into bears or labels, but damn, Kevin's one hot special bear. So you've got an open invitation. Wow, thank you. I also love your deep, sexy, creepy voice, too. Please don't stop. The one I just did. Yeah, the one you just did. <laughs> That's from Brandon. And this is for uh, Liz and Cindy from Harrison Ford. Um, uh, you've been a really good friend of Brandon. Um, and I'm beard. And uh, maybe you, you uh, stop hanging with him and get a man. There you go. That's for you guys from Harrison Ford. I just want to uh, state for the record, it's not gay if he's dressed like a lecturer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you're wearing red leather and you're blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right. I'm like, I'm Matt Murdock. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay if you're blind. Even if you're blind, can't you still tell that that's a cock and balls in your mouth? Doesn't matter. Could be a huge clit. You don't know. <laughs> it's all good in the dark. <laughs> Justin Wilburn. Is Justin in the house? That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, shit. With authority. Well yeah. done, man. Are you a, a Jedi Knight, sir? Damn straight. Damn straight. All right. Uh, my fiance Mary Beth, and her sister, Anne, will be with me at the show. Justin writes... Seeing that this is her sister's first time, I was wondering if you could give her a shout-out, welcoming her as Ed Wynn. Well, of course, I'd be happy to. Oh, my goodness, Ann! Have you met the dude who looks like the comic book female character across from you? It's amazing, isn't it? He's sexy as hell. I'd do him. Because life is for the living, don't you know? So welcome to the show. Say you're welcome. Thank you. All right, then. My goodness. <laughs> we get emails from around the world, James. Ain't no drag. Gavin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. <laughs> got hair in my mouth. What was his name? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's a very gay night tonight, isn't it? It is man? so far. It's not gay on Halloween weekend. I have this beard. <laughs> like I'm dating an Armenian girl. <laughs> like that old joke. What's the sound a pubic hair makes when it hits the floor? I thought this... that was what's the sound cum makes. Oh, stop. <laughs> this email from Chris S. Been a huge fan of the show. I want to thank you so much for giving me a reason to smile and laugh. It's been a while since I could do either. It would make my Halloween, Christmas, and New Year's if I could hear Ed Wynn getting a lap dance from the special needs girl. No. Oh. No. Oh. No. Oh. There are some lines even I won't cross. And that's that one of like, them. That's like crafting a key to the gates of hell. <laughs> that is. <laughs> that's applying like for a backstage pass to yeah. hell. It's like, oh, no, I, I refuse. Oh, my goodness. Sit right here, why don't you? I've got some singles. You mind it? <laughs> you hard. Oh. <laughs> Next email's from James Paul. He's a, uh, a New Zealander. He made that uh, Kevin Smith directs the Transformers video for us. Remember that uh, cartoon about yes. uh, Jason Statham and Bumblebee sitting in yes. the diner having a conversation about Chewbacca? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He made us another uh, animated film. This one is based on last week's conversation when you were eating the York peppermint patty and you said, let's do a sketch where I'm a kid trick-or-treating and you're the scary clown who answers the door. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he did a video already? He, did, uh, he already did an animated video for us. This is from James Paul. I want you to uh, direct your eyes to the screen, if you would. There's a video called Little Kev's Halloween. Hey, here we go, man. So I'm a 10-year-old kid. My friends, I'm like, you guys go ahead. I'm going to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Last on my real Halloween, like <laughs> I'm winded. <laughs> you guys go take a knee. <laughs> anyway, I'm eating my candy. Okay, and you're at the next house, and the door opens. Yeah, yeah. and it's a clown. Don't do it, man. This isn't even sweetened in the end. Stop 
Sammel, 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 there's your creepy clown. Thank Jesus. you, James. Appreciate the work. This next email is from Nathan. Quick question. Will there be a New Year's Eve show this year? Please say yes. We'll fly in, he threatens. I guess we can announce it now. I guess we, we are going to do another New Year's Eve show. We are. Yeah. We're going to be here New Year's Eve right here at the John Lovitz Podcast Theater. So ring it in with me and Ralph. Went so well last year. We had a good time last year. It was. It was a fun from show. From what I remember. <laughs> Wasn't just, didn't Justin Bieber play? Not at our show, but didn't he play here? On New Year's Eve, there was like some wild act. Outside. There was somebody big. Yeah, maybe Lady us. Gaga. No, no, no. I thought it was Bieber. Was it the Beeps? Yeah. Did he show up in his fucking Batmobile? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you get married in the Batmobile? It's very different to be in the actual Batmobile versus taking a Cadillac and making it sort of the Batmobile. Is that what he did? Yeah. It's called the Battle. He calls it the Battle Act. Yeah. That's actually kind of clever. No, it's not. <laughs> Stop it. We'll cover that in geek news a little bit later. <laughs> Next email comes from Howard in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, right outside my hometown of Philadelphia. Recently, you and Kevin talked about having David Bowie doing his version of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven on your Halloween show. Yes. Don't go back on your word or else I'll be forced to put the worst curse imaginable on your head, which as a fellow Philadelphian would be that all your future cheesesteaks come from Denny's. Oh, my <laughs> that is That is a threat that I cannot abide. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to fulfill Howard's uh, request, but I looked up The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and it's a long fucking poem. And uh, Bowie is an impression that gets old real quick. So what I've done is I, I've chopped it down, just a little taste of The Raven, as done by David Bowie for, uh, for Howard. You want to hit that for me, James? Once upon a midnight dreary While I pondered weak and weary Over many a quaint and curious Volume of forgotten lore While I nodded nearly laughing Suddenly there came a tapping As if someone gently rapping Rapping at my chamber door And the silken sad uncertain Rustling of each purple curtain Thrilled me, filled me with fantastic Terrors never felt before Open here I flung the shutter When with many a flirt and flutter In the steps of stately raven Of the stately days of yore Though thy crest be shorn and shaven Thou I said art shorn no craven Ghastly grim and ancient raven Wandering from the nightly shore Quote the raven Nevermore Quote the raven Nevermore 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 Quote the raven Nevermore Nevermore That's David Bowie's raven with interpretive dance by Kevin Smith. Was that the entire poem? No, sir. Just felt like it. <laughs> no, I liked it, Ben. There's been a very there's a classic rendition of, of the Raven done by James Earl Jones of yes. The Simpsons. Yes. I think you're number two. Now. Oh, thank you very much. Vincent Price is very pissed right now. <laughs> Every week we take a look at scenes and movies that we cannot believe got past the creators of the film. It started uh, just uh, many episodes ago. We looked at Back to the Future 3, where some kid was pointing at his penis while the scene was going on. And uh, since then, we've taken a look at a lot of movies. Most recently, I guess, Grease, with that weird dude who was stalking Sandy at the... Uh, the dude the... who was, they were like, tell me more. And there was a dude who was like, yeah, tell me more. Yeah. Just sitting in the stand. Uh, this week's suggestion comes from JP in New Jersey. This proves that even the masters, and it is Halloween, so we're going to take a look at a film from Alfred Hitchcock. Even one of the greats can sometimes miss something on the screen. Okay. Uh, I don't uh, I have the clip. He says, well, actually, I found it. It's from North by Northwest. There's a scene where Cary Grant is shot in a cafeteria towards the end of the movie. If you look closely behind the actors, there's a kid extra who obviously knows what's going to happen. 
So here is a scene from North by Northwest. I brought my trusty laser pointer to show you. But look for the kid on the right-hand side who apparently, this is not the first take of this scene, and he is well prepared. Let go. Let go. I saved her from the tears. Just get back. Yeah. He knows. Ah! He knows what's going to happen. Plugs his ears. Plugs his ears before the gun goes off. Here's another shot. We have isolated for you. Yeah, right there. Yeah. He's like, fuck that. My ears hurt. I'm not putting up with that bullshit. And you know, fucking Hitchcock hated children oh, too. Yeah. So he saw that and was just like, "I hate that child. <laughs> Have that child killed or cooked and brought to my dressing room." <laughs> totally. Yeah. Sadly, every week we take a look at the. Uh... Oh, I forgot the shit that should not be jingle too, didn't I? Yeah. Man, I'm fucking up tonight. It's all right, don't worry about it. We're no, passing. I love that jingle. Let's do it in retrospect, shall we? We shall. Can we do that, James? Yes. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. I just love that song. <laughs> Every week we take a look at some people in show business who have departed, who have left us, sadly. And we say goodbye to them in a segment we call Tinseltown Stiffs. And now another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. They will oh, indeed. No. What happened to the other theme song, man? Oh, that's Hollywood Helper. Oh, was it? Yeah. We haven't replaced this yet? We haven't replaced this one yet. I heard one online. It was by Mystery Man. It was really metal. It was like, Tinsel Town Staffs. We got to break it in. That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It sounded a little badass. All, All right. We'll, uh, we'll work on that. Uh, this week, a stuntman on the set of Expendables 2 passed away. This was horrible news. They're filming in Bulgaria. Apparently there was an explosion that was supposed to be used in a scene, and the uh, stuntman got caught up in the explosion and actually died on the set. Horrible news. All right, so wait, that's not... He was killed. He didn't pass away. Well, when you say it like he passed away, I was like, oh my God, like old age? No, he got blown the fuck he got up. blown up. <laughs> in an accident that... For a Stallone movie, yeah, which yeah. is uh, Ooh, not the way horrible, to go. Man. Two other uh, performers were also injured in that explosion. Uh, they don't they didn't release his name, so uh, the unknown stuntman, uh, we, we salute you. There is no uh, need for this anymore for anyone to get hurt on a fucking movie. Not they for a movie. All, not for a movie. There's digital uh, effects that they could be doing and whatnot. But could you imagine gave your life to tell a make-pretend story? It's ridiculous. Not even a make-pretend story, the first one. This is the sequel. <laughs> yeah. This is a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie now. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, this came to us from a lot of our British listeners, a guy named Jimmy Savile. He was a, uh, a big deal in England. He was a disc jockey and a TV presenter. He had a show for many years called Jim Will Fix It, where he would take kids' wish letters and fulfill them, make their dreams come true. Right on. Did you ever see the video of the kid who gets to spend time with Mark Hamill on the set of uh, Empire, I guess it is? No. Yeah. That was part of it? That was part of it. This kid wanted to meet uh, Luke Skywalker, and they made it happen, so... He passed away this week. And also, Paul Laka passed away. He was a songwriter and a producer. Had a ton of hits that he was involved with. Uh, lots of hits in the 60s. He was, more importantly, the first man ever to, to uh, sign REO Speedwagon to a contract. So we have him to thank for REO Speedwagon. Okay. I'll uh, keep on loving him. <laughs> Dude, just roll with the changes as I'm doing the story. Will you please? He also produced Cats in the Cradle, I know, which is a song near and dear to your heart. Oh, you love that song. It's a fucking horrible. I mean, it's a wonderful song, but it's a horrible song if you're a parent. Man, yeah. it's haunting. Yeah. It's always just Spend like, your go kid. play Fuck with you your kid. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, he gave us something to sing at sporting events all over the world when we want to piss off the opposing team after they pull the goalie or after the, hmm. the, 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 the pitcher gets pulled or when somebody strikes out. This is the song that he wrote in 1969. was a number one hit. God bless him, Paul Laker. He will be missed. Another segment we do every week is called Exquisite Acting. This is when big-name actors suck on the big screen. It's very entertaining. We looked at Pierce Brosnan. He, he sucked in Taffin. Or well, maybe you shouldn't be living here. Yeah. Ryan O'Neill, Nick Cage of Vampire's Kiss last week. Uh, this week is John Travolta. And you have to go to the classic film Battlefield Earth to find really... Hmm. To find Travolta in his 
really his best form, exquisite acting on behalf of John Travolta. He's playing an alien who is drunk at a bar with Forrest Whitaker. Forrest doesn't come off much better in this scene, really, quite frankly. But um, this is a great moment that was sent to us by Mark Harrison from Middlesbrough, England. Here is a scene where John Travolta is complaining about his position in life from Battlefield Should Earth. Should we give him the intro? Oh, sure, why not? <laughs> To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Here's some exquisite acting from John Travolta from Battlefield Earth. Well, I can assure you that I was not groomed since birth to have some cushy job that even a moron like you could perform <laughs> while you were still learning how to spell your name. I was being trained to conquer galaxies. Oh, man. Spell your name. I conquer galaxies. No, he won't hide Galaxies! Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> this week in new releases, this is what is in theaters everywhere this week. And I didn't realize until this person sent in a theme for this, we don't have a, uh, a theme for new releases for this segment. You're theme crazy today, man. I know. He uh, sent this in. He wants to remain anonymous, however, which either is a reflection on our show or the quality of his theme. But he says in his email that uh, the sound design for masturbation Real or simulated is actually harder than the real thing. So keep that in mind as you hear the jingle for possibly the last time for our new segment or uh, our ongoing segment, new releases. Coming soon. New releases. Now playing, he starts. Yeah. Coming soon. Yeah, new new releases. releases. I like yeah. it. I was with it. It's kind of sexy. In theaters this weekend, Anonymous, the story of perhaps the fact that Shakespeare didn't write his own plays, that maybe it was the Earl of Oxford who actually wrote his plays. It's in theaters right now. Uh, not many. They, uh, they were going to open it in a bunch, and they kind of opened it, and I think it was under 300, and it opened kind of weak this weekend. Yeah, because America said, who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> the Rum Diary opened this weekend. Johnny Depp. It's another movie that didn't open that well. It did about a million and change last night. I saw it this weekend. Fifty million dollar movie. How was it? I really liked it a lot. It was great. But I'm a big sure. Johnny Depp fan, and I love Hunter S. Thompson. It's based on his novel, of course. Good so. director, good cast, very expensive. That Amber Heard, holy shit! Whew. She is amazing. She is Which so is beautiful. She? She's the blonde woman who plays his uh, love interest in this. Who film. is she in real life, though? In real life, she is a. Uh, she was in the Playboy Club. She played the main character in the Playboy Club, the short-lived series, of the Playboy Club. She was the blonde Playboy bunny. Who else is she? Who else is she? She is a smoking hot blonde lesbian in real life. Really? Yeah, yeah. That caught your that caught what your interest, didn't it? What else has she been it? in, though? Uh, what else has she been in? Anyone uh, help me out? I think she was Pineapple Express. Yeah, she was in Pineapple Express. Is Seth's girlfriend in the movie. Yeah, where he's just like, uh, I want to marry me, and she's like, okay. And he's like, oh, I made a mistake. Remember the hot chick who turns into a zombie to be in a zombie land? Yes. That's her. And she's a lesbian? Yeah. How do you know that? <laughs> Would you hit on her or something like that? She, uh, she came forth. Did she? Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. Wow. But she's stunning in the film. She's beautiful. Okay. And the fact she's a lesbian just makes it all that much hotter. Yeah, a little bit, right? A little bit. Suddenly yeah. I'm like interested in her repertoire. Yeah, I know you are. In time, the new Justin Timberlake action film... That looks like it's going to do about 10, 12 million for the yeah. weekend. Not since uh, Taylor Lautner starred in Abduction have I been as excited about an action star as Justin Timberlake shooting guns and jumping over shit. The action stars have certainly uh, shrunk, man. Yes. yes. It used to be like Stallone and fucking Schwarzenegger or Bruce Willis, and now it's Justin Timberlake and, and the little boy who is the wolf sometimes. Yes. Yeah. The, the, talking, the talking dog from Twilight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't need testicles anymore to be an action star. That's the thing. No, you have to eat testicle. <laughs> and Puss in Boots also opened up the week this weekend. That's the big hit of the weekend. Antonio Banderas. That looks like about 37 to 40 million for yeah. the weekend. America loves its puss. <laughs> My friend wrote that. Friend, uh, Brian, Brian Lynch wrote that. He wrote that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's the only writer or if he's one of a few, but he's on it. HBO headlines this week, in keeping with uh, the holiday, all of the stories tonight will be horrifying. 
Just wanted to let you know that. Uh, anyone want to guess what the number one selling Halloween costume is this holiday season? Snooki. Not Snooky. That's horrifying. Charlie Sheen, sir, you're correct. Charlie Sheen is the best-selling Halloween costume this holiday season. Uh, Sheen masks, wigs, winning T-shirts, uh, Charlie's Goddess T-shirts, all of that stuff is selling out, according to retailers across the United States. And Charlie gets a cut of all of that. He's got all of that copyrighted. I don't know if I buy that, man. I was in. I've been in a couple costume stores this week because the kid wanted costumes, right? And I saw uh, many. I didn't see like fucking. Where they're flying off the shelf? We are winning with these costumes. There were a bunch there. I don't know if I'd buy this. This sounds like spin and hype. This was the last Kevin Smith costume in the store I went to. <laughs> they were flying off the shelves apparently. I saw. What did I see? The big costume that I saw every place I went was fucking Angry Birds. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a big round costume we put on and shit. I saw one. Muse wanted to get one. It was a little involved. Very large outfit. Uh, breathalyzer. <laughs> and like his head is here in the window, and where you blow is his dick. Sure, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Charlie is having a good week, however, because FX, the cable network, just picked up his sitcom Anger Management based on the movie starring Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. Who does he play? He plays the Adam Sandler character. No, the Jack Nicholson character. Okay. He plays the uh, counselor with the anger management problems. Okay. Uh, it'll start airing next summer and begin filming early next year. Only 10 episodes have been ordered, but they say if it proves to be a hit, the next level is 90-episode order for this show. So oh, my God. He could make a Quite ton of money. Jump. Yeah. So they're going to go from, like, one season to, like, 10 seasons. Yes. Uh, that's okay. The good news is uh, I've got DirecTV, so I probably won't be able to watch it next year, so I'll be, I'll, I'll be fine. <laughs> it's the first time I'm happy that FX may not be on my DirecTV. Uh, more horrible news this week. The coroner finally announced what killed Amy Winehouse. Shockingly, she died from drinking too much. I know, it's hard to believe. It's so. Uh, she had a blood level alcohol five times over the legal drunk driving limit, they finally recognized. Yeah, it was something like the legal limit is like 800 milligrams uh, per... 100 milliliters of blood, and she yeah. had like fucking 480 or something. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. They had to tap her body to get her blood out. That's how oh, much booze there was. It was yeah. like a and keg. The, the sad thing is she had like quit drinking for like three weeks or something like that. Yes. And so when she kind of picked it up again, she went back to her previous level, and that might have just... That's why the moral of the story is don't ever quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And the Brits are the best, too. Uh, the official cause of death, written on her death certificate, I saw this. death by misadventure. <laughs> Oh, I love the Brits. Doesn't that sound wonderful? It doesn't sound so bad when they write that on your death certificate. Sounds like a Winnie the Pooh story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh and the death by misadventure. Oh, bother. <laughs> death by misadventure. It sounds like she stubbed her toe and then she died. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> misadventure. <laughs> Michael Jackson, congratulations. Well, he's still dead, but he is the uh, number one earning dead celebrity, according to Forbes magazine this week. I saw, no lie, in the costume store I went to, to Oz on Sunset, mm -hmm. they had six different Michael Jackson costumes. I almost bought the one with a propofol drip. <laughs> <laughs> Came with an IV stand that you rolled around, but they were out. Michael Jackson earned $170 million in the past 12 months. And he hasn't even been here. No, he hasn't. Here's the rest of the list, the top five at least. Presley, Elvis Presley was number two, made $55 million. Marilyn Monroe was third with $27 million. Still. That stuns me. Yeah. I bet most people haven't even seen a Marilyn Monroe movie, and yet they're still spending $27 million they on her. They just know her as that dead lady. Charlie Brown artist Charles Schultz, $25 million. And then fifth, there was a tie between Elizabeth Taylor and John Lennon with $12 million each. Lennon's got to be pissed. This is such a fucking, like, even in death, they still rank you and make you race people. And shit. <laughs> it's still about how much you make. It's still a competition, even when you die. Horrifying news in uh, Celebrity Sick Bay this week. Andy Rooney from 60 Minutes is in serious condition in, in the hospital this week. Apparently he had some minor surgery. He was having an eyebrow ectomy, and uh, <laughs> things went horribly wrong. They won't give any more details, but apparently he is resting comfortably. But it's just three weeks after he announced his retirement that he's uh, very sick. Proving once again, just never quit your job. That's man. right. Die at the job. And don't stop to. drinking. That's rule one. <laughs> and then don't quit your job. All the time, apparently. 
Did you ever notice when people retire, they die shortly afterwards? <laughs> and that was the last moment with Andy Rooney. More celebrity sick bay news. Steven Tyler from Aerosmith was in a horrible accident this week. He was in Paraguay when he slipped and fell in his hotel shower and knocked two of his teeth out. Holy shit. That wasn't the bad news. The bad news was he had to go through four hours of emergency dental surgery in Paraguay, <laughs> which is done by a guy in the back of a panel van. Gives you a bottle of tequila and goes at you with a chisel and a chainsaw. Uh, I got a picture of uh, Tyler here. Here's what he looked like after, <laughs> after the accident. <laughs> he looks exactly like a tranny hooker I picked up on Sunset <laughs> once. He, he, looks like a, he looks like a tranny meth whore. A little bit like Tick Tooth Ruth. A lot of bit. It's like the wig has come off. It's the next morning. He's got stitches over his eye and he's missing a tooth. I'm pretty sure I saw him by this taco stand over on Santa Monica. <laughs> he still earned his $100. <laughs> and Pee Wee Herman says he'd like to be on the next edition of Dancing with the Stars. That I would pay cash money to see. Only if he dances on the bar. <laughs> ah, tequila ah, I want the mirror ball Paul Rubin said he would like to uh, compete because David Arquette's his friend and okay. he's been supporting him in the audience and he likes what he sees and he wants to be on the next edition of Dancing with the Stars oh, I thought he was like I want to dance with David Arquette no he wants to dance with someone else on the show I think it would be awesome um, I've never watched is that show pretty much what the title says right? I've, I've never watched it either but I would watch if Pee Herman was on it that's for sure right on yeah the Search of Scientology came out this week uh, that they have investigated South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker. This really? is sort of an evil story. They did, you may remember, back in 2005, that Scientology episode yes. called Trapped in the Closet, yes. where Tom Cruise refused to come out of the closet. Yes. It was an actual closet. He just wouldn't come out of it. And so the Scientology uh, folks did not take kindly to that. And one of their former members, who now has become a whistleblower, says that, in fact, he showed documents to the Village Voice that they actually went through their trash looking for dirt on them that they could use against them at some point. How weird, man. It's spooky. Phone records, bank records, personal letters. They'd go through your trash to find out what kind of prescriptions you're taking and what kind of alcohol you're drinking and how much. They can learn a lot from your trash, says this guy who was a former member of the church. All they'd learn from my trash is like, this guy jerks off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these paper towels. <laughs> there are three burned out fleshlights in this garbage. <laughs> They're supposed to last a lifetime. The Church of Scientology wanted to piss me off. They would just stop Jack Daniels from manufacturing. And they'd, <laughs> they'd go through my trash and just find empty bottle after empty bottle. Michael Lowen is not a good person. <laughs> he had a fucked up week. He was arrested earlier this week, I guess it was Tuesday morning, uh, for violating a restraining order against his girlfriend. Cops say that he is not supposed to go near this ex-girlfriend, Kate Major, but he did, and she alleges that uh, Michael pushed her multiple times, squeezed her arms, and threatened to throw her off a fourth-floor balcony. Hey, I'm going to throw you off the balcony. I just wanted to reenact it in case anybody Thank you so wasn't much. following closely enough. Cops showed up, took him into custody. The judge in the case asked Michael's lawyer, does Michael know how to read? Because apparently he violated the restraining order, which specifically said he wasn't supposed to contact her in any way. Right. Set bail for $5,000. He was released on bail. What did he do? The first thing out? Make a threatening phone call to Kate Major, his ex-girlfriend. The fuck out of here. On Wednesday, he was arrested again. <laughs> Cops went to her house, and he called while they were there, and she put it on speakerphone. The cops heard him threatening her and went right to his motel where he was staying at the Tahitian Inn, which is a lovely place in Tampa if you're ever there. Make sure you check it out. When they showed up, he saw them coming and jumped off of a third floor balcony trying to escape from them. Third? Broke his foot. <laughs> oh, my God. Lindsay's like, yes. I'm not the most fucked up one in my family. So he threatens to throw her off of a fourth floor balcony. He jumps off of a third. I guess he was just seeing if she could survive or not for the next time. <laughs> it's a little bit of poetic justice. His daughter, Lindsay, however, also had a very interesting week. She's always in the news. That's why we give her her own theme song. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? 
Lindsay made some money this week. She's actually earning for a change. It came from Hugh Hefner. Playboy paid her nearly $1 million to do a nude photo spread this week. Apparently, uh, Lindsay wanted a million. They offered seven fifty. They met somewhere in the middle by adding an eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Uh, she already shot the shoot, and according to her mom and sister, she looks great in it. That's fucking creepy uh, to no level. The mom and sis are sitting around watching her take nude photographs. This family is the model American family. Yeah. Father, mother, children. Hey, don't we have that picture? A picture of Lindsay naked? <laughs> <laughs> I got an anticipatory boner, and then it <laughs> and then turned out to be Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler's, Tyler's bummer. Tranny Hooker picture. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, Lindsay actually was very productive this week. Not only did she pose for news photographs, but she also did her community service time at the morgue. Which I thought was nice. They could have combined the two. Oh, that would have been hot. Her draped over the autopsy table. Dead sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, uh, her genitals are a gold mine apparently this week because she was also received an order from the Fleshlight folks. Hey, Fleshlight. They offered her a million dollars if they could take a mold of her vagina to make Lindsay Lohan sex toys out of. And? She said no. Why? Why would you hold out? Her representatives say she would never accept such an offer for any amount of money. Wait a minute, how much was that again they had? Um, no, she said the Playboy shoot was tasteful, but this is not tasteful. Why isn't it tasteful? I don't know, but Fleshlight said... flavor into it. <laughs> Fleshlight said, that's cool, most people have had the real thing anyway. So it all... How many are you going to sell, really? I tried to talk my wife into doing it, man, because they were sponsors on Smodcast for like a year. And I was just like, you know, I, I fuck a lot of fleshlights, but I, it'd be better if I fucked the one that was molded off of you. And we could sell it. What do you think? And she didn't talk to me for two days. I can imagine not. I thought that was kind of romantic. It's I a repulsive like, the only, idea. The only fleshlight wa I want to fuck is the one based on your <laughs> pussy, dear. And she was just like, why the fuck did I marry you, man? That's repugnant. I don't think so. I think it's kind of sweet. I'm like, I don't want to cheat with some <laughs> random fucking... Like, because they take... You know, porn stars and mold their pussies and uh -huh. stuff. And so instead, you can get one that's just not really... It's just a hole. Yeah. <laughs> and I went with that because I felt like using somebody's <laughs> vagina was cheating on my wife. And so I was like, let's get one made of you. Yes. And she was like, and you would use it? And I was like, yeah, and anybody else, too. It would be kind of fun. <laughs> she didn't see it that way. <laughs> I wonder if they'd offered her a million bucks if she would have done it, though. At that point, I would have been like, oh, you're doing it. <laughs> She would have been asleep, like and I would have been there with fucking Play-Doh in the night and shit. <laughs> Play-Doh? Okay, whatever it takes to get that mold, man. Was it the Fuzzy Pumper Barber Shop? I would be describing it to one of those court people, and like fucking in detail, so they can draw off something and then create a mold off of it. <laughs> silly an artist putty. rendering of her vagina. What if it was like Silly Putty? Remember, like commercial for Silly Putty when we were kids was, and this was. Imagine this. This is the days before the fucking internet, because yeah. this was enough to capture the attention and imagination of a child. Silly Putty, they showed a kid take it to a comic uh, strip from newspaper. Right. Which, uh, if you don't know what that is, a newspaper kid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they put the silly putty down, and then he'd you know squish it, and then pull it up slowly, and the ink from the newspaper would be on the silly silly putty. Right. Then you could stretch the image and make it look all goofy. So you could make Beetle Bailey look even thinner. Yeah, it was fun for minutes. It really was. <laughs> and that commercial was enough to like get kids to be like, "You gotta get fucking silly putty. It's amazing. It takes pictures." So you would put Silly Putty on your wife's vagina and make an imprint of yeah, it. Yeah, make a little copy and shit and give it to Fleshlight. And then you could stretch it and make it look all weird and stuff. That's my wife's pussy. Dude. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing says love like making a replica of your wife's pussy into what looks like a flashlight made out of rubber. I also offered them to make, um, since they were uh, spot, Smodcast sponsors, we offered to do the Smouth. And they were like, what's that? I'm like, it's a mold of my mouth and Scott Moser's mouth. Who would want to put their dick in that? <laughs> I don't know, but that'd be kind of fun, you know? Besides you. That, that, well, there's that, of course. Yeah. But I mean, just the notion of, like, put it out there and see which one sold better. Like, whose mouth did people want to fuck more, me or Scott's? <laughs> Never happened, but we can dream. We can do it on Babylon. I would rather not. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm afraid I'd win. 
Uh, while we're talking about talentless horrors, Kim Kardashian's in the news again. She has announced, it's funny because uh, the actual casting was announced today, but she has let friends know that she wants to play Lara Croft in the next Tomb Raider movie. Apparently she was so serious about it that she wanted to pony up the cash and produce the film herself in order to star. But they have announced today apparently that Olivia Wilde's going to be the next uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. And I know, once again, we run to this every episode. Who? I know you have no idea who Olivia Wilde who is. Who is that? Well, when you see Tomb Raider, you'll figure it out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Kim Kardashian also celebrated her birthday in Las Vegas this week. This is, this is the fucked up shit with these people. Is that they get to go and have a birthday party in Vegas, but if you and I went to celebrate, we would cash, you know, we'd pay out some cash. Yeah, yeah, of course. For the privilege. They paid her to come to this marquee nightclub at the Cosmopolitan Hotel and Casino. They paid her to come and have her birthday party there. Kim Kardashian? Kim Kardashian. What birthday is it? Uh, she know? was 30, 31 years old, I think. And so they paid her to have the party there. Yes. Amazing. The best part of the story is, though, when she was announced and came out onto the floor, everyone in the nightclub booed her. No. Yeah. On, On her, her birthday? own birthday, they booed her as she was announced. Happy Booth Day! Boo! Apparently, Why would you show up and boo, man? Well, I think they were there anyway, and then when they announced that it was going to be a celebration for Kim, a lot of people, it's a very hot, it's a, very, it's a brand new casino, so apparently it's a very hot nightclub, so a lot of people didn't even know that it was going to be her event, so when she was announced, they were unhappy with the fact. Now, Chloe, her sister, apparently was very upset, took the microphone and tried to defend her, and then the booing got even worse. <laughs> oh, no. Kim is so protective, excuse me, Chloe is so protective of Kim that apparently she uh, grabbed her, snatched her up, and then climbed the replica of the uh, Empire State Building at New York, New York, and then was batting down planes as they came flying down to try to rescue her. <laughs> Twas beauty that killed the beast. Beauties and Beasts also in the news. I told you it's all horrifying. I finally stuff. saw a picture of that girl. Of Chloe? Yeah. She's she's fucked. She is kind of wookie. Like. Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> a little bit. Not, you know, like a cute wookie. Especially sitting next to Kim and uh, Courtney, the other two. Yeah, she's, it's like one of these things is yeah. not like the other. She was in the shallow end of a gene pool. And the... A little bit. Uh, dude, speaking of Beauties and Beasts, Courtney Stodden. You remember her? She was the uh, 16-year-old girl who married the 51-year-old actor Doug Hutchinson. Oh, my God. Yeah. From Lost and from The Green Mile. They yes. are still in the news. She is now 17 years old, so it's not nearly as creepy, right? <laughs> for a 51-year-old to be She's married. almost a woman, I That's guess. That's right. Yeah. Uh, they were looking for pumpkins at a pumpkin patch to celebrate Halloween and they were in Santa Clara outside Los Angeles here. And, well, they weren't so much looking for pumpkins as they were doing a lewd photo shoot. And there were families there with kids that started to complain about how disgusting they were. And so eventually security had to come up and throw them out of the pumpkin patch. <laughs> do you think that's a first? Like, do you think I do. The first people have ever been like, will you please leave the pumpkin patch? You are too disgusting to look for pumpkins. Please leave. I brought you some of the photos that were taken at the pumpkin okay. patch. This is a Courtney uh, showing off her 17-year-old ass at the pumpkin patch. And then uh, apparently they started dry humping over the pumpkins, her and her 51-year-old husband. And it's when they started really going at it and making out around the kids that people got freaked out and they were asked to leave. And, and was somebody following them with a camera for oh, yeah. a photo shoot? They brought a photographer with them so they could shoot these photos in the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Will you please leave, sir? Why? We're in love. <laughs> Courtney tweeted after the event, Have a beautiful, blessed Sunday. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. John 724, she quoted from the Bible. Oh, she's one of these Christian kids, too. Well, kind of. Before this event, she tweeted, Ready to hit the hot and heavy hay this afternoon. <laughs> Yeehaw! Love your all-American girl. So she's one of these Christian kids likes to fuck she Yes, is. that's what she is. Congratulations to Ricky Martin. His career is getting a comeback. He's announced that he's going to be performing on Broadway starting next April. They're doing a revival of the uh, classic Broadway show Evita. And Ricky Martin will be starring in it as Che Guevara, apparently. He is making a comeback. Uh, due to the fact that Ricky has joined the cast, they've changed the name to Livin' Evita Loca. Mm. 
Or maybe they haven't. <laughs> Take that back. Jennifer Lopez in the news. Your okay. old buddy Jennifer. I know her. Yeah, yeah. This story's hysterical. She was performing at a, an Indian casino in Connecticut. And the Mohegan Sun? The Mohegan Sun, yeah. I've been there. You've been to the Mohegan Sun? Yeah, yeah, I went looking for a poker table. Like, we ain't got any. I was like, fuck, I drove three hours. That's my Mohegan Sun story. <laughs> and a poker table. Isn't that weird? That's weird for a casino not to have yeah, a poker yeah. table. They didn't do They're like, that's the one game we don't play. I was like, this is the only game I want to play. They're like, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> not a great story, but, you know. <laughs> Relevant, and as much as it happened where this happened, I guess. I would have given them some blanket with smallpox on it or something. <laughs> I would have sold them Manhattan or something, you know, for 24 bucks. You know, get some revenge. Horrible. Damn that. You're burning. Uh, she was performing, and she has a bit in her show, I shit you not, where she does a song called Until It Beats No More About Love, and behind her comes out a Jennifer Lopez lookalike dancer. And she goes through a series of dance uh, moves with lookalikes from her past relationships. So a P. Diddy lookalike comes out and they do a dance number. And then a wait, ben- wait, but, uh, but she does the dance number? No, or? she's singing and they're dancing behind her. So there's a fake her and a fake Diddy. Ex. Right. Okay. Imagine if you were on stage performing and a guy who looked just like you was performing next to you. <laughs> it would be like that. Right. <laughs> Imagine how weird that would so be. So fucking strange, right? How yeah. bizarre, right? Oh my god, that'd be amazing. And if the show was like we're podcasting, right? And then a ser- like there's you know someone else looking like me <laughs> right. doing interpretive dance of the podcast, right? And the podcast is about all my failed relationships, right? So one by one, people that look like chicks I've dated but nobody knows, right, would come up on stage, and I would start writhing with them and dancing with them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so into that show, man. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing. So this is what's happening. I mean, so she she's singing, she was she's singing. singing, performing for the audience. Behind her, a Jennifer Lopez lookalike is dancing with a P Diddy lookalike. Okay, and then there's a transition, and she starts dancing with a Ben Affleck lookalike, <laughs> and then she starts dancing with a Mark Anthony lookalike. So she's just like, these are the three dudes I've fucked? Yes. <laughs> While she's singing about love, she's showing her past relationships. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, whatever. She's a you know, performer. It's and weird. the poor the poor Mark Anthony looked like they had to get him out of a hospice to get him up on stage. <laughs> that, that, was, that was sad. He was running around the stage going, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> Speaker. Well, apparently she was so moved by their performance that she got choked up on stage and started to cry. Oh, no. Because, you know, her, her marriage has failed. So that would be like, back in our podcast example, <laughs> I look over and see you fucking dancing with, like, the girl I dated in high school. And right. And start rolling a tear. And exactly. Shit. Ooh. And the audience went crazy because she got so choked up with emotion. Crazy what? Started killing each other? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they, they reached out with her with, with love and support because they felt so bad that their idol was going through a tough moment. Get out of here. She Which, made it real. Man. Oh, she was real. Shit got real. And, and, and because I think it was total bullshit, I brought the clip in for you to look at. Um, <laughs> this is her faking being choked up on stage at the Mohegan Sun. I hope you'll enjoy it. She loves him. She said, I love you. She can barely go on. There's love. What does that mean? <laughs> what is the wait? What is the what did she say? She said, "There's love, right? And then there's love, and then there's love, and then there's love, and then there's love." And that's the she meant the love that the audience was giving her in the moment was love, or the fake versions of her dancing with fake Ben Affleck were love. I think it was someone showed her the check for the night's box office in the back of the, <laughs> the back of the stage, and she said, "That's what she loves." Michelle Williams. Is playing Marilyn Monroe in a new movie called My Week with Marilyn. This is a scary story. She said that she has received the ultimate credit for her performance as Marilyn Monroe. You and I should go play the Mohegan Sun. <laughs> Will you let the Mohegan Sun go? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, why, how, how come her? Why not us? We can go play there. No, we can't. Yeah, sure we could. Look, I don't want 
A, a, an image of you and me lookalikes dancing behind us while <laughs> yes. we're doing comedy. That would be amazing. We're in the middle of a podcast. And Some guy just... in a leather jacket comes out drinking Jack Daniels, <laughs> humping you in behind us. I don't want that. <laughs> uh, Michelle ahead, Williams plays Marilyn Monroe in this new movie, and she claims that God, a... Why, why do so many actresses like to play Marilyn Monroe? Because she, uh, she was fucked up. Like that's uh, so. That's it. It's just like I get to show how fucked. She's up an I icon, am. and she's she was she was emotionally challenged, and they get to uh, break down and and and, and fuck the president. So they got that going for you. All right. uh, she said while she was filming, a psychic told her that she had spoken with the real Marilyn in the Beyond, and Marilyn approved of her performance. And Michelle Williams was like, "You're crazy." No, she said, "I'm glad she liked it. She thought oh. I was doing a really good job, so maybe she likes it." Michelle said. Uh, Marilyn reportedly liked her so much she uh, sent her a bottle of prescriptions and said, see you soon. <laughs> Daniel Craig's going to be James Bond again in the movie that they're calling Skyfall, which is a horrible name for a James Bond movie. Uh, he has announced that he is going to be the first James Bond with a beard. He's growing a beard for the role. Okay. You should give him some tips. I'm going to say. Some people would say he's had a beard for years, if you know what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's a, yeah. no, I'm kidding. That's what Sean Connery says about him. Did you see him in those shorts coming out of the sea? 007 inches, it looked like to me. <laughs> uh, Bond fans say uh, Pierce Brosnan had a beard, but that's when he was, uh, he was a captive in that movie, and he didn't have any choice. This will be the first Bond with a beard. So, uh, people so are, his tr- he's a lot of Bond fans choice. are upset. They're upset by the fact that Bond will have a beard, because he's never had a beard before. He's supposed to be clean-shaven. I mean, okay, but he's actually technically supposed to have a scar across his face as well. If you read the original Ian Fleming book, Casino Royale, he's got a scar. I heard so. it's originally supposed to be a hermaphrodite. He's supposed to have vagina and testicles. That'd be so fucking hot, Stop man. it. Could you imagine? He's just like, because in those movies, he's always like, gets the job done and then fucks the chick. Yeah. And then the, now in the movies now, he could get the job done and fuck himself. <laughs> Like, you know how the old ones that always like, Mr. Bond, we're trying to get Bond on the fucking satellite, M, and they get him uh, and tuned in, and he's like in bed in space with some chick. Like, that was Moonraker. That was the end of For Your Eyes Only. The end of all these movies, they catch him fucking a chick. And yeah. like, oh, James. But if he was a hermaphrodite, the end of those movies is way different. <laughs> because they're not trying to get him going, oh, God, James. They're going like, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> it's him bent over awkwardly. He's like putting himself inside himself. He's like, when it's hard, it won't bend, but when it's soft, it won't reach. (laughs) Nobody does me better. (laughs) Steven Spielberg threw George Lucas under the bus this week. Finally. Really? Yeah. He finally stepped out and was just like... He did an interview where he said that the... (laughs) uh, The aliens in the Crystal Skull, the Indiana Jones of the Crystal Skull, that was all George's idea, he said. I sympathize with those who didn't like the MacGuffin, he says, which refers to a plot point that really is kind of meaningless in a uh, in a storyline, because I never liked the MacGuffin. George and I had big arguments about the MacGuffin. All right, stop saying MacGuffin, Steve. Yeah, yeah, he keeps using it. I didn't want these things to be aliens or interdimensional beings, but I am a loyal to my I am loyal to my best friend. When he writes the story he believes in, even if I don't believe it, I'm going to shoot the movie the way George envisioned it. Don't don't do that again, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> He did say it was his fault, though, for the fact that Indiana Jones climbed inside a refrigerator to escape a nuclear bomb. You may remember that scene in the film. Which is, well, which were you more offended by, him in the fridge or him in the aliens? Fucking aliens. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I was bothered by the fridge? I wasn't offended by either because it's a fucking movie. <laughs> you know what offends me? Like hunger, you know, fucking shit like homelessness. That shit, I was just like, what a dumb idea. And then I moved on. Spielberg says, blame me, don't blame George. That was my silly idea regarding the refrigerator. People stop saying jump the shark and now they say nuke the fridge. I'm proud of that. I'm glad I was able to bring that into popular culture, he said. But they don't. They don't say say that that anymore. They just say, oh, remember when Spielberg was good? (laughs) And more horrible news this week. An Egyptian mummy attacked a woman in Qatar this week. That Egyptian mummy was actor Omar Sharif. 
I don't know if you know who Omar Sharif is, but he was in a movie uh, many years ago. It was, a, it was a big epic film, won a ton of Oscars called Dr. Zhivago. Mm -hmm. He was also in Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia he well. was a big heartthrob back in the 60s, a swarthy, good-looking um, Egyptian actor. And uh, he was known as quite the heartthrob. He's older now. He's 79 years old. He was at a film festival in Qatar this week, and he was <laughs> posing for some press photographs. And the photographers wanted shots of him alone. Well, unfortunately, some woman didn't understand that, and she approached him, uh, and he was angry at her. And I brought in a little video clip of what happened after the fact, and it's, it's very disturbing, um, but it's kind of funny, too. Here you go. Yeah, he slapped her across the face because she asked for a photograph. Holy shit, man. So just a warning for those of you who line up over here for get t-shirts signed after the show. <laughs> if I'm in a bad mood, I will fucking slap you right across the face. <laughs> He's going to give you the Mother, Sharif. He was an Oscar nominee, for God's sakes. Hey, it's time for Geek News. Every week we take a look at all things geek. Kevin and I are both geeks and we like to talk about it. James? Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kev's Geek News. Last week we talked about the fact that Mark ha Hamill announced he wasn't going to do the voice of the Joker any longer. Yeah, that was a bummer. Uh, he lied. He came out this week and said, I just wanted to clarify that my Joker comments are not related to Arkham City. So if they do another sequel to that video game, he said he would be willing to voice the Joker again. Okay. Then a fan said, what if they were going to do an animated adaptation of the classic Alan Moore, Brian Boland novel, The Killing Joke, the famous oh, Joker comic book? Of course. He said, oh, I, I'd come back for that. So apparently he's, he's going to come back yeah, and do so he's not what do you got is what he's saying, right. basically. I'm not going to do the Joker anymore unless you offer it to me and then I'll be back. <laughs> Uh, also in geek news, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Justin Bieber was in the news this week. He was pulled over by cops in his battle act. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Justin was cruising with his three friends. He was in his battle act, and his friends were in a Range Rover and a black Rolls Royce. Let me guess. Aquaman, Superman, Green Lantern. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, they cut off a CHP officer. So the CHP officer pulls the whole caravan over. And, of course, Beebs being Beebs, he got off with a warning. That's it, really? That's it, yeah. If it had been you and me, we'd be doing hard time right now. The worst part of it is that he's taken a perfectly good Cadillac and transformed it into a half-assed Batmobile. They had photos of it on uh, line uh, this week. But here's the best part of the story, and the reason I bring this up is because where the radio station where I do my morning radio show, we share a facility with a top 40 uh, radio station mm -hmm. across the hallway. And so this week, while I was calling Justin Bieber uh, all kinds of nasty names for having this car, turns out he was in the hallway no. on his way to the other radio station. And he was walking in the hallway. And we didn't know he was there until about halfway through the show. Right. When we were sitting there in between songs and commercials, and we saw him pass by the window. So we stuck our heads out, and all we'd hear him say to his giant black bodyguard was like, this is a rough morning, bro. <laughs> First of all, you can't pull bro off, Justin Bieber. And second of all, your car is embarrassing. Here's some photos of the bat battle act. This is Justin uh, in front of his car. He's painted it flat black like a stealth bomber. This is the bat signal that he has put on the front of it. This, these are nice cars, these, these Cadillacs. By the way. It's right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. This is what he's had written on the back trunk of the Cadillac. Batmobile, see, it's written there in the back. And then on the side doors, he's got his own logo. He doesn't have the Batman logo. He's got the JB logo on each door on either side. That doesn't really look like a Batmobile at all. No, it doesn't. It looks like, um, it, well, it looks like a pussy mobile is what it looks like. And <laughs> meaning he gets lots of pussy? No, no, that's not my meaning at all. <laughs> Justin needs to be stopped, uh, really, by any means necessary. Um, Canada, we're calling on you. Uh, Death penalty for Justin Bieber. Oh, yeah, why? It's, it's time. It's time. Is he skip Holy shit! Did double it tap already. The double tap. 
Um, he's going to run his clock. It'll be done in a, a matter of time. He's 17 years old, and he's got himself a half-assed Batmobile. Let's see. Look, it's if just you were jealousy. 17 years old, exactly. No, I'd have the real fucking Batmobile. That's what I'd have. <laughs> I'd be cruising deep. I'd have Adam West next to me. I would be, I would, for reals. What would that sound? I wonder what that would sound like. Old chum. Pull into the drive through I'm feeling a big Mac attack. <laughs> And now do Ralph. You have to be Ralph talking to Adam West. Shut up, old man. I'm driving. <laughs> no, I would never say that. I'd be like, <laughs> Just at the red lights, I'm safe. I'm a safe driver. That's why you're getting some drive through man. That's right. Get that taste out of your mouth. Every week we like to end the show by asking a musical question, but maybe we should give away the uh, the uh, the prizes for costume before we do. Huh? How do we do that? Uh, we, we look out in the audience and you pick the best girl costume, best guy costume, and we give them uh, we give them an autographed box set of uh, of uh, you of do videos. that, man. I'm t- I'm that guy that wants to give everyone a prize. I know you do. What about the the Heath Ledger Joker right here? That's pretty impressive, don't you think? I dig, man. I dig. <laughs> Let's make him our guy. Let's make. <laughs> Somebody just do fucking Karate Kid? Yeah. Is Let's, that why? What are you? A new age of the Cobra Kai? Put him in a body bag, Johnny. He's dressed like a, like a, like a skeleton while yeah, he's doing he's got that. The, but that's what he did. He's got the face mask. Oh, I see what you're it's saying. When they were beating him. He didn't say that line while he was wearing that makeup. That's this where dude, I'm confused. He's doing a mashup. But I yeah. followed. I respected it. Yeah. Totally. So we'll give one of these to the Joker. And where's the where's the, where's the girl over there? We got a girl someplace. Oh my God! Look at him stand up. Hit wow, those are light. significant costumes over Holy there. Holy shit, man! Yeah, you guys definitely win. All right, we'll give we'll give oh, one. Look at the face turn. It turns. Turn the bear face. That's fucking amazing. This is Halloween. This is a dance, bitch. This is Halloween. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Why would you waste that costume on this show? <laughs> if you, you should, sat in the back. You should have sat right up front. You should Fuck be someplace like real. That. They should have sat here. <laughs> All right, we'll give you guys a, a box set, too. We're going to sign these and Someone give them out Someone make sure you take guys. a picture of that so we can put it up on the page. That yeah, that's very good. impressive. That's great, man. All right. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin's freaking out. He's way too stoned for that costume. I love the Oogie Boogie. The face is changing. <laughs> It would be amazing to get high with Oogie Boogie and just fucking do that dance and shit. Throw dice. I'm the boogie man. Let's ask the musical question we ask every week, shall we, Kevin? Just how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Stringy. That's, That's big. Of course, you can go to neesoncock.com if you'd like to post your own How Big Is Liam Neeson's Cock Fact. Uh, John McGuire in Glasgow put that all together for us. We appreciate it. Uh, let's start. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's so big that his cock ring was forged inside the fires of Mount Doom, and only there can it be destroyed. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? He had to hire two men to lower themselves from the top of it on a scaffold and clean it with squeegees. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When he went trick-or-treating as a child, he always had to be a kangaroo walking backwards. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever, yeah, man. And appropriate yeah, for the season. Totally. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It has express and local lanes, so you can pick your lane you want to go in. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? FedEx offers express and overnight deliveries from the head to his balls. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Even Courtney Stodden isn't shy around it. <laughs> that was the 17 year old showing her ass yeah, in the pumpkin, the pumpkin patch. patch. She has no shame, see, so. I get you, I feel you. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that even vaginal sex is considered skull fucking. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it rough, rough, eh? She likes it rough, eh? <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? it is the 99%, and we are the 1%. <laughs> 
topical, <laughs> topical. Very. Yeah. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? After Tony Danza saw it, he no longer asked, who's the boss? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's reaching back. It is. But I so appreciate cool. it. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? You have to trick it into saying its name backwards in order to send it back to the fifth dimension. <laughs> Mixoplick joke. Yeah, <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It will soon be getting its own NHL expansion team. <laughs> Wonder what the name would be. Um, the the foreskin is. That's not bad. The stiffies. That's cute. Um, let, let's make it. Uh, shit, shit. God, I'm put on the spot. Uh, Liam Neeson's cock, and it's a hockey team. Cocky. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cocky. I like it. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, Neeson's What is pe- it? The Schmitties. The Schmitties. Neeson's I like pubes. Cocky better. Neeson's pubes. <laughs> Go pubes. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That at country fairs, he lies on his back, and people pay to hit his nuts with a giant hammer <laughs> in an attempt to ring the bell at the top. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a good time tonight. Thank you for being here with us on a very spooky edition of uh, Halloween Boobalon. Uh, but that's all we got for this week. For now, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. I'm sorry. Battle the fuck on. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. For Kevin Smith and Kevin Smith. Holy fuck. <laughs>